be. Okay, I believe we are live. Let me verify real quick. I think we might be live. Let me check real fast. Give me a hot second, everybody. This, this, um, this is my first time being live in a minute, so y'all forgive me. Give me a hot, quick, quick hot second. I think we are ready to rock and roll, though. You can't Thanks. see it. I got you. Thank you. Yep, we're live, everybody. You guys can go ahead and share to your platforms, your several platforms. We are definitely live. We are live and in color. Everybody has been tagged already. If you have a device, um, you guys, you might want to put it on mute so we won't be able to hear it in the background. We are live. Outstanding. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the special edition of the Hot Seat. Uh, this is the highly anticipated discussion about my very first anthology project. I have brought some incredible authors alongside of me to co-labor with me for this project, and I'm so excited that we're going to be sharing with you guys tonight about what you can expect from the race to the ring, the seven C's of a successful courtship. And I am just totally, totally elated to just really be able to do this project with some awesome, awesome, awesome beings. We're gonna start off in prayer as we always do to definitely honor our creator before we get started, you guys. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, this time to connect, this time to share, this time to just give out the information about this great project that we worked on. Father, we thank you so much, God, that we're doing this for you to get the glory and honor continuously out of our lives. And we appreciate you for getting us to this place and this space. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So everybody, good evening. Good evening. Tom Neil Jackson is in the building. Amen. Jason amen. Henderson, amen. Pastor Jason Henderson is in the building with us. Lady Victoria DuBose is in the building with us. Jason Thibodeau and A.D. Roberts. Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, Good evening. welcome. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started and get everything rocking and reeling here. So, everybody, the book is called The Race to the Ring, the of a successful courtship. The book is about relationships. It's about the building blocks that lead to a marriage. Um, one thing that I have noticed over the past probably at least decade or so, there hasn't been a lot of talk about courtship and a lot of people really don't even know what a courtship actually translates into. And so I was a burden with that to be able to share this with younger communities, even the students that I work with, they used to ask me, what is a courtship? What are y'all talking about? And so I'm so excited to be sharing this project and have these awesome, awesome authors to be connected with me for my first anthology project. We're gonna get started with a great friend of mine who has been authoring projects for many years now. And we have been friends for oh, probably two decades plus. He is a success coach out of the great state of Florida. And he is one of our authors on the project tonight. And we have him present with us after his busy, busy schedule and traveling and doing all the things that he does with his brilliant network. Mr. A.D. Roberts, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're glad to have you here with us. I'm glad to be here. I'm absolutely glad to be here and totally excited. Ready to rock and roll. Awesome, awesome. A.D., tell us a little bit about your chapter this evening and your contribution to this project. Well, you know, it was it was really exciting for me because, um, you know, we might want to if if we're not talking, might want to put the mics on mute because I can still hear feedback from okay. everybody. Okay, can y'all mute yourselves out until the, so you guys are actually speaking, if you don't mind, please. If you don't mind. All right, but so it's really exciting. Um, you know, first I want to say thank you, thank you for um, the invitation. To, to be of service to people. You know, this is what I do every day, empowering people's lives and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it was interesting that you asked me to do, um, to do this project with you guys. Um, and the section that you gave me was about <laughs> communication. 
I, and, and, and so I was like, how can I do, how can I approach this communication thing in, in a courtship process and, you know, really, really be of service, but come out of the box in a different way. And so I didn't want it to be a, a, you know, just a regular, okay, this is how you talk and these are the things that you say and all of that. And, and I really meditated, uh, you know, I took a few weeks really just thinking about the process and it came clear as day to me, clear as day. You know, we don't really have a problem communicating. We don't have a problem talking. Um, we talk all the time. We talk every day. We post on social media. We do all kinds of things. We talk all the time. But I think what the problem is for most people, especially in romantic situations, is that they don't listen. We don't listen. Um, I had a mentor and uh, Dr. Blunt, he would always teach me that the, the, the reason why he was so successful was because he was a multimillionaire. I'll just say that. And uh, I go into detail in the chapter, but one of the reasons for his success was the fact that he got information. And how he got information was that he would always listen more so than he spoke. And he would always say, there's a reason, A.D., that if you want to be really successful in business, there's a reason why you have two ears and one mouth, because you should listen twice as much as you speak. So with that being the case, you know, I start analyzing how, how we speak to one another and how we communicate. But the problem is many times we get frustrated because they're not getting it. They're not getting our point. Our spouses, our significant others, you know, there's like a breakdown. And so in, in, in this chapter on communication, I call it love talk, is, is, is really preparing a couple to really listen to one another and to hear the other person's heart. You know, many times, um, and I, I won't be too long, many times we, in, in relationships, you know, we, we are so busy trying to prove our point, prove our point. And, you know, we get in these arguments and these debates about certain things or aspects of our relationship. Mm -hmm. But the problem, again, is not the fact that we're not communicating. The problem is that we're not listening. And we're not listening to understand. Often we're listening so that we can respond. We're listening so that we can come up with some catchy little phrase or we're listening so that we can debunk what our partner is saying so we can make our point. But that's not it. You know, the nature, the nature of healthy relationship and healthy connection, I believe, is about truly understanding somebody and where they're coming from and what they're dealing with. And if the two of you can sit there and put your egos on the back burner and listen to one another and do your best to understand their viewpoint, I think it, it builds a solid foundation for a beautiful, beautiful relationship to move forward on the way to being married outstanding outstanding and you know what i i like i said i read the entire book last night um and for our viewers it's an incredible read it's an easy read it's under two hours i literally read it from cover to cover in under two hours and so i was excited about that because you know as advent readers as we are you want to be able to pick up a book you can get to what you need to get to and get out you know right. And exactly. so I wanted the book to be a go-to book even after marriage for people to be able to go back and reference. And one thing that I noticed in the chapter that you did, you talked candidly about a specific relationship and how the two of you guys, mm -hmm. the communication was not that you weren't talking, it was that the language that you two were speaking was totally different and no one understood the language of the other. Can you just piggyback on that just a little bit and we're gonna head to the next author. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I was in this great relationship. We were really young. Uh, I was in college, we were in our early 20s. And, you know, I'm the kind, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that, that when it comes to relationships, I'm real touchy-feely. I'm the one I'd rather, you know, lay up on the couch and cuddle up and watch TV, watch movie. Um, I'm, I'm real tactile, very affectionate. And um, our, our, our relationship was challenged because even though I believed that we loved each other, I knew I loved her and I really believed that she loved me, we loved very differently. 
And she, how I showed love and how she showed love were two totally different things. But at that, you know, at that age, you know, you really don't, you know, you don't have the vernacular for it. You don't have the experience to, to really deduce the fact that, oh, she loves by service because, you know, she would always cook and clean and take care of me and write love letters and all that stuff. And then she would get frustrated at me because that's not what I did. And so she didn't feel love. I didn't feel love because she wasn't a cuddly, warm, and fuzzy type. She didn't want to lay up and cuddle all day long. So it put a major stress on our relationship. But the point in, in talking about that is everybody has a love language. And if we're talking about communication, communication is not just verbal, it's in our actions too. And it, you know, people show love differently. So if you can understand the language of love that your partner speaks, even though you may speak a different language, you can learn to speak theirs. So that's the, you know, that's the whole point of that thing is to really give, give our folks a solid foundation so they can really have a good, healthy relationship. That's awesome. That is powerful. AD, again, thank you so much for being on here tonight with us. We're going to come back to you in just a little while, but our next author is up, did an awesome job, so excited. She is an etiquette specialist doing some crazy, crazy things out of the great state of Illinois, powerful, impacting, a great leader, and so ecstatic to have her on here as well, joining forces with me for my first anthology project, Miss Victoria Jones Dubois. Victoria, are you there? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Let's chat it up. Yes, <laughs> yes I am. I'm here. I'm doing well. Doing so well. With us. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation to author with us for this project. We truly are grateful to have you on with us. Um, Gracie and I, when we were determining the authors that we wanted to set center stage for this particular type of project, um, it's so funny because she and I both were like, Victoria, Victoria be good. I was like, yeah, Victoria, I had a name like this. And well, so I had a list and I, you know, I presented it to Gracia and of course, Gracia is commuting right now. So she's not going to be able to be on with us, but she is in the chat tonight. She is our chief editor and we're super grateful to have her editing the project with us. Yeah. Uh, and she was, it was hilarious because she was like, oh yeah, Victoria be good, Victoria be good. So it was <laughs> ironic because I had a, I had everybody's name on the list mm -hmm. under my pillow, no joke. And she wow. was like, Victoria would be a good addition. And I said, I bet you if I ask, she'll say yes. And so yes. it was without hesitation that you accepted the invitation to come on the project with us. Mm -hmm. Victoria, I read yours and I was a little jealous, I must say. Because you know, my story wasn't as lovely and romantic as yours, you know. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, I'm in my feelings right now. Victoria's story is just like got me almost in tears. And as Gracie was editing, we're texting back and forth. I was like, did you read Victoria? She was like, oh my God. <laughs> so super excited about your chapter as well. Thank we you. We talked already about communication, but we're talking with you about connection. And yes. this is really powerful how you brought together every component of connection in such a very, very strategic way. Talk to us Thank about you. your chapter in the book. Oh, gosh. Um, well, first of all, before I go there, let me do my due diligence by saying that I'm very grateful to be a part of the project and very, very grateful that you chose me. Uh, that you asked me and I did. I just I just felt that it was just the right thing to do. The timing was just right, everything about it. So thank you for being a part of such an incredible team. You are a great visionary and I am very, very pleased to be working with you and yeah. all of the other authors on this project. Wow. So thank you so much. I appreciate you, Lane. You're you're welcome. You're welcome. So connections. Oh uh, wow. I you know what I led with the true life love story of a young right. couple because um, because the book is about courtship, I wanted people to take the essence from that story and see that courtship can happen and does happen in today's age. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted young people that read this book to know that there are certain components that go into having a successful dating relationship. And I talked about it in my uh, chapter that oftentimes it starts out as a dating friendship then that leads to a dating relationship and then courtship ensues, especially when you're talking about having a lifelong relationship with someone. And so um, the connection there for this couple was 
instantaneous, you know, and I talked about in the book how it spanned over a 10 year period where they dated one another, they found out the best and the worst about one another, but still realized that they were a perfect fit together. And we don't hear about that oftentimes these days, but right. it does happen. It does happen. And so I wanted people to see that it's a real life. It's not a fairy tale story, that it's a real life story of a couple. And um, they lived through it and got through it, through the worst of it, through the best of it. But always at the center of their relationship, they always talked about how connected they were. And outside of that electrical moment that happened in the very beginning, they found ways to stay connected through each other. When they were working together, when they were playing together, um, they often talked about that they did not have um, what we would call it a spiritual relationship together. They didn't always right. have the same belief system but they didn't let that hinder them. He learned about her belief system. She learned about his, and they found a middle ground where they were able to come together. And they both decided, well, you know what? The word of God does say this. And so if we do it this way, this will still help to keep us connected. So there are various ways to be connected, but in whichever way that you are connected, it must be genuine. And I talked about how it does become the current that carries you through your relationship, but you have to maintain that connectivity at all times. Right. And I, and I thought that was cool how you were talking about the surge of power with the wattage and the lighting and bringing yes. the light together. And it was so interesting because as we were setting up for tonight, um, my daughter, we got our lighting all situated and everything. And my daughter was like, and I kept, ch I kept saying, well, change the light. Just, I said, whoa, that's it right there. And, and it made me think about how we change the temperatures in our relationship to right. where it's not too hot and not too cold, not too but cold. everybody is comfortable within the mm -hmm. confounds of that connection. And that is where the power lies in courtship, heading into marriage, where everybody's comfortable. Right. And, and right. so, you know, we're both, we're both bringing in that bond, that, that bond of connection to bring that that total light to say, "Ooh, that's it right that's there. Right. That, that's, that's it right. right there. We're at the right temperature to be able to proceed into a very strong, solid marriage. So thank, thank you me. so much for your chapter. Your chapter was good. And Gracie, and all in the so chat, talking about Hallmark Worthy and Karen. I'm going to need you to <laughs> Gracie, laugh out loud on tonight. I'm just teasing. But no, it really is. a. I mean, everybody's chapter is so I mean, man, I was I was sold. I literally was like, how did I buy this book? <laughs> you know, I was I was like, this is really. I mean, seriously, it was very everything flowed together so smoothly. Uh, we didn't have a lot to go in and tweak or anything. It's just it's just a good good connection as far as we're concerned to collaborate. It's always it's always it's always necessary to bring the right people together to get the result that you're after. Mm -hmm. And that's what relationships are all about, be it professional, platonic, business, whatever. You gotta have the right people to that's really true. make the marriage of life in whatever that's right. capacity work. work. Right. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Thank you so much. We're honored to have you. We'll have you back in a little while. We're okay. gonna go to our next author. This young man is a powerhouse. He is a phenomenal being. He is one of the interesting most interesting people that i've met in a, in in a in a very short period of time but got a great great mind doing some other projects and has just released another book here recently and now he's on our anthology project bringing his mind and his energy to the forefront and the, to the table to help us get this book out to the universe mr gg robert malloy mr malloy are you on here with us if you are unmute yourself let's chat it up I know I thought I saw him get on with us. I know I saw him. He was on. He was on. Okay, well, we'll go move on. We'll get to him next. The next person that's coming to the table that is one of my great friends. We've known each other for a very long time, at least over a decade. He's been my business partner for many, many years. Great guy, actor, local here and all over the United States doing some huge projects with his acting career and just doing some phenomenal things and actually his daughters are now actors as well on some of the projects that he's been doing. Mr. Jason Thibodeau, your chapter is on consideration. Unmute yourself and chat yes, it Yes, ma'am. It is on consideration. Oh man, I'm doing phenomenal. Just groovy, as I like to say. 
<laughs> What's going on in the real world, Mr. Thibodeau? Uh, nothing much. Uh, just found out today we're bringing back a, another stage play in March that uh, we did about a year ago. It was highly acclaimed, and that's a good thing. We got some auditions going on this weekend for a web series that I'm in. And, you know, oh, we're about God. to start filming again. So, you know, just a bunch of good stuff, good positive things oh, happening God. in the atmosphere, you know, all the other good stuff. Okay. You know? okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the atmospherics and whatnot. In the atmosphere. That's, that's right. So that's that's, right. So your chapter is on consideration. I know that you had a lot of mm -hmm. things um, as we discussed your chapter. You had a lot of things in your mind, much like AD uh, with his share. It was very fluid. And in your share, mm -hmm. you talked candidly about relationship consideration. You went from every phase of the consideration, consideration of not only courtship, but leading into and after marriage. Talk to us about Absolutely. your chapter and what you put in the meat of the chapter that you wrote for the anthology. Right, right. So, yeah, as you mentioned, my chapter was on consideration. Um, one of the things I pride myself in being is an open book, at least I try to be. And so what I did in this particular chapter is I just, as you mentioned, I, I just I just put it all out there for the most part and just talked about how you take consideration into in, into your relationship when you first meet somebody, you know, as you start to date, as you start to move around and everything else. And it's also something to keep in mind because at that point you're staying at your own place. So there's only so much consideration that you would give for this other person. Right. And right. normally that's when you want to spend some time with them or you are spending time with them and then moved on until into, excuse me, uh, like long-term dating. So now y'all are really in the thick of things. Y'all are dating and everything else. Y'all are spending more time together. Might even possibly live together or start talking about living together at that particular time. And just talking about how that relationship changes, the different things that you have to take into account. Do they sleep in? You know, do they not like calls in the middle of the night? Or, you know, are you or do they go to bed early and maybe you go to bed late or whatever the case may be, right? while you're dating but then again you know like i said you still might be staying at your own place but spending a lot more time together and then of course i just went on and jumped into it after being married for over 11 years i was like hey you know what let's talk about what actually happens after you've been together for quite a while consideration definitely becomes a lot harder after you've been with somebody uh for quite a while because as i guess it's just fair to say that there's a level of comfort that usually comes into that relationship and mm -hmm. so there are times to where you have to try harder to make sure that you are showing that consideration. It doesn't have to be hard per se, but a lot of times you have to put forth more effort. You know what I mean? So right. the consideration aspect of it actually becomes easier because you should know, uh, as my man AD said, you should know that person's love language or at least be paying attention to what that person's love language is. But sometimes it's just harder to move, if you know what I'm saying. It's just, you know, You've gotten so comfortable, y'all been through some things, um, et cetera. And, you know, sometimes you just got to take that step and just, you know, show some consideration. That way you can kind of get whatever it is that you may be after. Exactly. And and you, you, put, you put something in there that I kind of thought about uh -oh. when you started spelling out the pieces. I'm not going to tell the juicy part. <laughs> I'm going to leave the juicy part for people to pick up the book because there's a right, juicy right. piece in everybody's chapter that I am not telling. I'm going to let them go and get it for themselves because the piece about ADs that I wanted to tell so bad, I said, I'm not telling. I'm going to keep it to myself because it was it was a real juicy part. I highlighted it last night. I was like, oh, I'm not going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there was one thing that you talked about when consideration when you were talking about the actual issues that we face in relationships in regards to possibly running late or needing assistance and things like that. And you talked about just paying attention to your partner in such a way that you pick up where they leave off in that consideration Absolutely. capacity. When you talk about that, give us a real life example of how that fits into your life equation, especially with you being an actor, your wife being an educator, your children are very, very active not only mm -hmm. acting, but your children are very, very active in their athleticism and, and even, um, you know, and even analytically and everything, they're doing a lot. So when you talk mm -hmm. about consideration, what does that look like in real life for you guys? Very good question. Very good question. And as you mentioned, I mean, we are very active. You know, I have kids that are in extracurricular activities, my extracurricular activities outside of my work. 
my wife being a teacher amongst other things, you know, and it, just so you know, the educators, they do a whole bunch. When they get off work, they might get off at 2.30, but they're not off. You Absolutely. know what I mean? They come home and they're doing right. things. Right. So we all have to be cognizant and, you know, of what it is that we have going on. And with that much going on in one household, let's just be honest with each other. We get tired. You right. know, we get tired. Sometimes we get frustrated, uh, things of that nature. And we really have to be able to maneuver in that space, the space being the house, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it, I mean, like, say, for instance, my wife will come home tired sometimes and everything else. Clothes still need to be washed. I know she wants to go sit down. I'm not about to bug her about those clothes. You know, I might go do it myself or, you know, or just put off to another day or whatever, depending on what I may have going on myself. I mean, that's just, like I said, it's just one of those little simple things. And it just comes from noticing what's going on with your spouse, right? So mm -hmm. that's what I was saying earlier about taking things into consideration after you've been married for a while does not have to be hard. It's actually pretty easy because, like you said, love languages and you should know that person. Sometimes you just got to pay attention and be ready to make a move, you know? Right. Without absolutely. giving too much of what I was talking about in the chapter. But, yeah, you know, basically, you tell it's just don't tell it all now. <laughs> right, right. It's, sometimes it's just that little simple thing. Like, you know, you know, they may have said that, that like my wife may have said that morning, hey, I'm gonna get these clothes done when I get home. I see her come in, hair frazzled, you know, you can tell she had a rough day. Hey, I'm not about to say anything about them clothes. I'm gonna slide them on out the way so that way we don't trip over them and it is what it is, you know, until the next day or whatever the case may be. It can be something that simple. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. Mm -hmm. now, the, I, I appreciate that. We we are grateful to have you on with us. I know you had a break with your project, so we wanted to catch you during your break before you got back to your usually scheduled program, which means we wouldn't be able to catch you be in the wind. So definitely wanted to connect with you and have you on with us on the project. And I definitely appreciate you accepting my invitation to being one of the authors on the collab. So thank you. Kudos to you and congratulations on where you're headed. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. The next young lady that's coming to the table, this one right here. Lord have mercy. This one right here. I absolutely love chatting it up with her because when I tell you she is like direct and straight to the point, I think that she probably is one of my first cousins on my daddy's side of the family, not my mama's side, on my daddy's side of the family. She got to be one of my first cousins because she like gets straight to the meat and potatoes on everything. Like, okay, it's, I don't want to talk about no side items. I just want to know what is the meat and I just need to know the meat and we. I don't need nothing about no side. So... She is a phenomenal, already author, published author, done, I think this is her 12th project that she's been on. Um, she's been giving me some guidance behind the scenes, coupled with Gracia for our mastermind meetings that we've been having ongoing throughout the project. Even Pastor Henderson has came on and gave us some more guidance for some other things that we wanted to do inside the actual equation of the anthology project. But Tonil Jackson is a literary specialist, and we could not be literally, literally correct without her literary knowledge. <laughs> and so she came on with us and did a chapter on consistency. And I mean, like she just bam, 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 like she always does inside the scope of her chapter. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing in your chapter, Tonil. Welcome. Thank you so much, Coffee. Um, again, thank you for considering me uh, to be a part of this project. And it was a blast, you know. Um, I, as you said, this is my 12th uh, project that I'm doing. And a lot of the stuff that I do is typically nonfiction, self-help. I've done a couple of relationship books myself. And what I have found to be the case is that people, as you said about the book itself being a quick read, I have found that people don't like fluff. You know, I do book reviews all the time. So I'm always between writing my own stuff, publishing, editing, reading. I'm a around words all the time. And what I know is that people like for you to get to the heart of the matter. They don't want to read a hundred pages just to get the first point. And so for me, I like to be, you know, extremely direct and to the point. I don't want you to ever have to 
to wonder what I'm talking about, if that's what I mean. And that's how I am, as you alluded to, that's how I am in everyday life. You know, I'm very direct. I'm very straight to the point. I don't I always say God didn't bless me with the gift of sugarcoating. So if you don't want to know the truth, you know, then do not come to me because I just know how <laughs> to give you what you it is. Right. That's, that's how I am, you know, <laughs> absolutely. And so when we talked about consistency, um, for me, I felt that it was a, because consistency is an adjective. So it describes different, you know, nouns or whatever. It describes things. And so a lot of times I know when people think of courtship, they look at courtship as being a period of time. So they look at it more as a verb. I'm courting you or I'm dating you. And so they look at it as this action, which it also is. But for me, I wanted for people to really look at courtship as a behavior, as things that you do, because that's what consistency is going to describe. It describes all the things that you do within the confines of a relationship. And I, for me, I just feel that consistency is key. And no matter what it is that you're doing, in order to be effective, you know, whether you're talking about business, whether, you know, relationships, romantic relationships or otherwise, you have to, your actions must be consistent. And so throughout the chapter, after I try to be consistent in describing the importance of consistency. And you know what? When I saw the coins, cash, and currency, I said, okay, turn up. <laughs> I was like, that's that's what's up. Up. That, was, that was, you know, when I when I saw that, I said, you know what? Won't that is. And and you know what? I'm glad that you brought that out because. I know that AD has been on our show um, along with yourself and Victoria and Jason Thibodeau um, in times past. And one thing that AD would talk about was not placing so much emphasis on tangibles, but intangibles. And that was Absolutely. something that you tapped into in your chapter was talking about the intangible and the paying attention to what's really going on throughout that courtship to really find out for sure if this person is going to be a good fit for not just your future, but your focus on what you want to accomplish and who you intend to become. So that was very powerful. Thank you for your part in the project. I, I can't give away. I'm not going to give away anybody's secret. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to remain calm. <laughs> but if everybody can mute yourself out, unless I call on you so we can make sure we keep the, Keep it real clean because I'm going to be actually pulling it. It's going to be on YouTube and everything for our viewers to be able to check it out later. So make sure you're muted. But the next young man we have, again, Tonell, thank you so much. We appreciate you accepting the invitation to be on the project with us. But the next young man that we have coming to the stage is Santa in the chocolate form. <laughs> we got Santa in the chocolate form, honey. He is a phenomenal leader in his own right, doing some amazing things. Just released a project here recently that he's going to be doing a series on, which we're super excited about that. Congratulations to you on that. And truly ecstatic about you joining forces with us to do this particular collaboration. When I literally handpicked everybody, it was ironic how our paths crossed. And I always say, you know, when it's time, it's time. And after knowing your sister for God knows 20 plus years, I didn't even know you existed. And I was like, really, really? <laughs> but truly it was the right time and the right moment for the right collaboration. With that being said, everybody welcome Gigi Robert Malloy and his chapter is on commitment. Mr. Malloy, talk to us about your chapter. Well, first of all, um, thank you for the opportunity. Can you hear me okay? Of course, we got you. All right. All right, very good. Uh, good evening to everyone. Um, I appreciate, again, this opportunity tonight, as well as the, the project itself. And uh, I was thrown off a little bit when you asked me to speak about commitment because you don't know me like that, Coffee. <laughs> all right, so, you know, well, what is that all about? But I, I found it uh, a very um, good time to, to actually discuss it because I had to look at myself and, and really take into consideration what commitment means to me and uh, how could I uh, get that information 
to others and, and, and allow them to see the same values that I have and that I've learned and that I've e evolved to. So, you know, commitment is, um, is major. A lot of times we think about commitment towards the, um, the end of a courtship going into a marriage. Um, you know, we think finally we're going to commit. Finally, we're going to be together. Finally, we're going to do, you know, create this, this life together. Um, but the angle that I came from was actually commitment in the very beginning. In addition to that, the, the first commitments that we have to think about, because when you meet someone, there's certain things that you like about them, certain things that you notice about them, and it makes you, you know, want to be with them. Um, but when we start talking about the commitment, we have to look at that individual and see what is that individual actually committed to? Because you don't know them yet. They don't know you yet. And you're getting to know each other. But what are they commitment to? And I think that's what attracts people so much. You know, you fall in love with someone because they're passionate and they're committed to something. And you want that same passion. You want that same commitment to be with you. You want to build that together. So, you know, I spoke a little bit about uh, the beginning stages of commitment, meaning commitment to your purpose, commitment to your creator, commitment to yourself, you know, without getting into too much, um, you know, those are the things that are going to be key, especially um, being in, in, in a long-term, long-lasting relationship, you know, that evolves into being engaged and evolves into a marriage. Because when you think about it, a lot of times in relationships, when things, uh, when you have the most challenges, uh, may be when you find yourself losing your identity, you know? So it's important to know what your identity is in the beginning, continue to cultivate that. So when you, when you are with someone in, in that relationship, you know, you, you're building each other, but at the same time, you're also committed to yourself first and foremost, committed to your purpose first and foremost, and committed to your creator. So I think that when you have those components, it's, it's easy to love long, and it's easy to continue to fall in love with your partner over and over again because you see that commitment, um, you feel that commitment, and you know it builds trust, it continues to build your character, um, and it keeps your identity and keeps you focused. You know, So it's nothing like being with someone who is committed and committing to them. So, you know, without all the wordplay, you know, it, it was definitely interesting. I had to look at myself and, and realize because I've been in relationships, I've been married before, you know, um, and, and even looking at, you know, where I'm at right now, I had to look, well, what are my commitments? You know, what would make me a good candidate to be uh, someone's husband besides someone's boo or someone's bae? What's going to take that to the next level? And I believe that, you know, uh, that woman looks at me and she's like, hey, you know what? He's committed to his purpose. Um, he, he knows himself. Uh, he, he has a relationship with his creator and um, he is committed. So if we're going to be together, I have no doubts. I have no doubts at all that this man is going to be committed to me and having our relationship to be as strong as it possibly can. Well, let me tell you why we picked you for the commitment ministry <laughs> because of your commitment to what you're doing and your purpose, because we did some sneak previews and we did, you know, ask around and get a couple of amens to see if you was anointed <laughs> for the process, honey. So don't think we didn't do our research. Believe me when I tell you, I'm always watching. I'm like big brother. I keep an eye on everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> So that's why we chose you for the commitment piece. And we truly, I'm telling you, I literally handpicked every person in strategic. I am, you can ask anybody that knows me, I'm a very strategic human. And I am truly committed, um, like what you were talking about in your chapter. I was like, yep, this me, yep, this me. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, I, I can dig it, I agree. And um, you know, it, it, it's powerful in how you were talking about the first commitment to something and someone greater than what who you are and what you are. And then when you started breaking it down, the components, then that encounter with your purpose person becomes magical because you're aligned 
with whatever your process already is. And that person just fits into that puzzle piece that just so happened to be missing of your divine order for your life. So that was powerful how you put that together. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being a part of the project. We're gonna come back to you. The next person that we got up to talk with us tonight is out of the great state of New York. Met him through a collaborative project that he did with my initial co-host for the hot seat when I first started doing live talk shows. And I was in New York and we were just there and on purpose to be able to do some things um, and build some more networking and relationships and masterminding and things like that and working on some more collaborative projects as we were in the New York area. And when he was talking, uh, Mr. Dixon and I was like, he gonna have to be on our show. We gonna, he gonna have to be on the show. So it, it's been, it's been almost, it's been well over a half a year now already since we had an opportunity to connect with Pastor Jay um, and the projects that he's doing. And there, we have a lot of similarities, musical background, stuff like that. I recently re-engaged and recommitted to my musical gifts and talents that I'm so grateful for. So I've started back singing and recording myself and ecstatic about that. But we don't want to yield the floor to me. We talking about Pastor Jay right now. <laughs> but What's up? What's up? Him being with us, the chapter that we had for him, it was funny because Gracie and I talked about this chapter and we had two pastors in mind. And so as I continue to really, really seek the creator about this whole project, because I really wanted to be very fluid in my decision as to who we got to come on board with this journey with us. I said, Pastor Jay, he can do conviction because, man, that would be the perfect addition to the project to find somebody who is convicted about conviction. So right. congratulations, <laughs> congratulations on your clothing line. I see you rocking your wear this evening. Welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. What's up? And also your, your song, your solo project that you did, that you collaborated. I think you was collaborating with Kanye West, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, 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 no. It just came out around the same time that his oh, okay 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 yeah. i knew it was something around that was connected those two with the radio station and all that good stuff but tell us yeah. about, tell us yeah. about your chapter on conviction well first of all just like everybody else i want to thank you for uh allowing me to be a part of such a groundbreaking project and um i honestly felt that my assignment for my chapter about conviction was to remove the negative connotation that comes along with that word. Because right. when most people hear the word conviction, they automatically think about somebody that's being penalized or someone that's been caught and the conviction is the result of a, a, a crime or something like that. But um, when I looked at the word conviction, it means a firmly held belief or opinion. And I think that when you're getting into a courtship, this is something that you should uh, create the culture in your relationship to have a conversation about for the length of your relationship. Because who I was when I first got with my wife 30 years ago, I'm not the same man anymore. I've matriculated, I've grown, I've morphed into somebody else. So my convictions when I was 19 are not the same convictions I have now. Some have remained the same and some have changed drastically. And I think it's so important for us to create a culture of safety uh, regarding the conversation of me being truthful about what my convictions are, because my convictions control my behavior. My convictions control my decision making. And that ultimately controls the culture and the atmosphere that's created in our courtship, which will turn into marriage. So if I, as a man, am not uh, in the mindset where I'm safe to honestly tell you what my convictions are, you will be living and dating a stranger. Because when we first get together, everybody always sends their representative. You really don't know me until you spend some intimate time with me. You know, sometimes after moving in and being married, because we don't have that conversation up front. So I kind of tried in my chapter to break away from the negative connotation, because con conviction is something that actually can safeguard you from wasting years in an unequally yoked relationship. It can keep you from being offended when 
you know your partner's heartbeat and their convictions. You know what they would do and what they mean when they do what they do and what they say what they say. So it, it, it's, it was very interesting to, to write about this. So that was my assignment, I feel, to kind of shed the positive light on convictions because they're absolutely necessary because any relationship without convictions or the knowledge of your partner's conviction is, is destined for destruction. And that was something that you put in there that was interesting. You talked about if you don't know your person's conviction, that you run a risk of that relationship never being a partnership, but two strangers existing in the same space. And how that is end up heading into a, dis a dissolved relationship because no one really knows what lies between the words of each person and what's going on internally, you know, as far as what makes their heart beat. It's not just a right. natural heartbeat that we have, but a spiritual heartbeat that we have, no matter what we believe in and how we believe in it. Like Victoria said earlier, she made a good point about the two individuals that she talks about in her chapter to where their system of belief was not necessarily the same, but they had an earnest respect for each other's faith, if you will. And they mm -hmm. kept that encompassed in a healthy space in their relationship for them to be able to still cohabitate and exist within their marriage and their courtship and their entire relationship to keep that balance and harmony intact. And so I think it's very powerful how you spelled out everything about the conviction inside that encompassed inside of a courtship. And you also talked about dissolving the courtship if you find that your convictions don't line up with one another and you talk Absolutely. about how that's the reason for finding out a person's convictions to see if what lies beneath the surface can be okay as far as the years and as we change and as we evolve and we grow and we become the people that we're destined to become, is this going to be a fit for the future? I think we lose a translation with relational pieces as we do this little puzzle of getting to the marriage, we lose a lot because we're so inundated with that initial prowess of a person's beauty or his masculinity or where they work or what they do or this, that, and the other, that we forget the core of the being that we're dealing with. And I think this is going to be very powerful in assisting people to get to the core of the person that they are courting so they can really know if this is somebody that they can go into a future life with. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate Welcome. you bringing what you brought to the table. And we was like, man, I tell me and Gracie, we've been reading up something. I'm telling you, we didn't learn. <laughs> we didn't learn and so yeah. in my, my chapter, um, first of all, you guys, I uh, the seven C's, I literally had three separate times when I was thinking about the letter C, I was like seven C's. And it was interesting because I have probably like 10 or 12 book titles in my brain. And when this one dropped into my heart, I was I have a notepad on the side of my pillow, literally in my bed, no joke, because I get all these downloads while I'm sleeping and I wake up like two or three. I was like the seven C's, the letter C's. So I'm sitting there processing and then thinking about I'm like, what is seven C's of a courtship? How does what would seven C's look like? And so as the words began to come to me, I started really thinking about what these words really mean, like with Gigi's, with commitment, how he just masterfully put that together and then communication, how AD just brought to light a lot of information that people do not consider. He talked about how we communicate all day, every day in all types of ways and not just verbally. And then when Victoria brought the connection piece to the table and then Jason was talking about consideration and how he just shared about how his family uses consideration on a regular basis to keep their family life healthy. And then Tonil, when she did the consistency and she dropped them three C's in there, the currency, cash and coins, I was like, OK, then. And then with you talking about the conviction and how you your belief system and how you actually execute that belief and how you live by that belief and how you're guided by that belief. And then mine was on contentment. You know, the, the interesting part about my chapter, I was, I told Gracia, I was apprehensive about writing my own chapter in my own book. That, that sounds crazy. But I remember 
um, when I was younger, not being contented in the relationship that I was in. And I was a married person at that time. Um, and I was sitting there, I was sitting here and processing internally, like, wow, just recalling to memory the things that I learned along my life's journey to become the person that I am now about being content. And the scripture came to my mind, godliness with contentment is great gain. And I always live by that scripture as far as my life is concerned about being content. I remember Paul saying candidly that whatever state that I find myself in, I have learned to be content. And so as I dug into that, I kind of really, really talked about my childhood years and my developmental phases and heading into adulthood. And I listened, I listened and I looked and I watched and I, and I, I just, I really, really thought and dug deep about that whole concept of contentment. And ironically, uh, Malloy, I don't know who else comes from a big family, but Malloy comes from a huge family as well. And he talked about the years that his parents have been married. And ironically, my parents and his parents have been married around the same amount of time, 40 years plus. And so I thought that was unique because I remember going to visit my parents a couple of weeks ago and my dad was talking about being contented. And it was ironic because he didn't even know that that was the chapter that I was going to really be um, digging into inside the anthology project. And I was telling my dad, I said, yeah, it's amazing how you can exist with a person and learn how to be contented in whatever you have to experience in that love that you chose to journey through life with. So with that being said, we're at 8.56 p.m. I can't give out no more secrets about the project. Y'all gonna have to pick the book up in February when it hits the bookshelves. So I am excited and ecstatic and honored to have these six incredible authors on my first anthology project rolling with me for the race to the ring, the seven C's of the successful courtship. So you guys will be seeing more information as we get closer to the release. The pre-sales will start in January, but before we shut down, I want each and every one of you guys to tell everybody your full name and what you're currently doing that they can tap into right now to be able to plug into you the individual person that's on the anthology project. We're going to start with AD. AD, tell us who you are and how they can connect with you. I am AD Roberts. I am a success coach. I'm also a hypnotist. Um, there is an amazing way that you can change your life, and that is exactly what I do. Help you be your best. So the easy way to connect with me is to go to uh, brilliantliving.net. If you go to brilliantliving.net, that has all the links and all the different ways you can connect. Um, the, the most recent project is the U2.0 series. It's a Udemy course right now. Yeah, it is. A, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it is really about redefining your life. And I, I go each step with you, step by step by step, day by day. And it's a wonderful process. And so that is that is on the uh, brilliantliving.net uh, uh, link to. So that's it. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Victoria, come on and tell us who you are and how they can connect to you. Okay. Uh, well, my full name, Victoria Jones Duos, or Dubois, and um, I <laughs> am a... <laughs> I love it. I am an ed etiquette educator and coach, and by the end of next week, I will be completing my certification for um, life coaching under the Worthy Yay! Coaching wow! Banner. Yay! I'm so excited about that. <laughs> um, I love that because it's geared towards not just women, but it's also geared towards men but it's specifically geared towards people that are coming out of or that have been dealing with some sort of trauma, women that may have been abused, um, even men that have been abused in various forms, whether it's physical, emotional, um, spiritual, and it's returning them to the point of self-esteem. Because you know, when you don't value yourself, no one else can value you as well. So it begins with you. So I will be completing that certification on next week. Um, I have also recently opened up my own etiquette studio here in the great windy city of Chi-Town. 
So that's where I host my classes and do my workshops and consultations. Um, is located on the south side of Chicago in the Bridgeport area, for those of you that might be familiar. And the best way to contact me is really to go to my Facebook page, my fan page, Victoria School of Etiquette. You can reach me there. You can also reach me by Gmail, um, Victoria School of Etiquette at Gmail, V-S-E-T-C 16 at gmail.com. Awesome. That's the best awesome. way to get into awesome. You guys make sure you put all of your information in the chat when we shut down so our viewing audience can have access to that information. Mr. Robert Malloy, talk to us. We I saw that you promoted here recently some workout ministries for the folks trying to get in shape <laughs> to turn up for the new year. So, you know, hit them with your best shot. Go ahead on, Malloy. <laughs> All right, cool. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Robert Malloy. Now, you can find me on Facebook as Malloy Rob. And uh, that's one of the easiest ways that you can get to me um, as far as on Facebook. Um, I do have a website as well. It's called GG After Dark. Now, I'll just be as brief as possible. Um, there's a, there's a, a few things that I do. Um, first and foremost, I do want to mention, um, I have a nonprofit organization. Um, I am a, a, an, uh, Air Force veteran and I have a nonprofit organization called Keeping Veterans Fit. Um, th there's a, uh, Facebook page, Keeping Veterans Fit, um, Dash Atlanta. And the website is keepingveteransfit.org. And uh, that's definitely one of uh, one of my pride and joys, uh, being able to help veteran and veteran uh, families. There's a few programs that we're promoting now that helps with individuals that are dealing with uh, PTSD, uh, homelessness, and things like that. So that's that's a big deal. Um, I just released a book called Uncomfortable Conversations, and uh, that that is the series that. Um, coffee alluded to and it just talks about uh the things that we typically don't like to talk about and uh you know uh, the book was just released uh, on cyber monday uh, you can find it on my page uh, again it's uncomfortable um conversations really really interesting um i guarantee you uh once you get into it you'll you'll want to know a little bit more about it um and finally i am a, a fitness coach i actually um, coach special needs kids here in Atlanta. I also coach adults um, and children. So uh, again, you can find that information on my Malloy Rob page, which I'm on right now. And um, I'm also on IG, um, GG After Dark. You can find that. And uh, also GG Goes Hard. So, you know, social media is so important, so we keep pushing it. And uh, awesome. again, you know, I thank you guys for the opportunity and I appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. Jason Thibodeau. Future, future, future man on the on the film, and where you gonna be Australia next year? Where you going, Jay? Hey, wherever <laughs> the Lord takes me, dear. Wherever the Lord where takes, it takes me, you, you know. Where takes you? Well, absolutely, Tell us a little absolutely. Bit about yourself and how they can connect to you, Jason. Well, my full name, Jason Thibodeau. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, actor, uh, director, you know, writer, etc. Um, outside of acting and everything, I'm actually an insurance underwriter. I know that sounds boring, but you know, we definitely have a lot of fun with that as well. Right. However, you can actually catch up with me on uh, Facebook at Jason Thibodeau, Jason J A S O N Thibodeau, T H I B O D E A U X. Uh, you can get me on Instagram at uh, underscore J T H I B underscore. Uh, that way you can figure out some, you know, catch up with me on some projects that's going on. Um, actually, I didn't mention it earlier, but I have a couple of stage plays that I had the opportunity to act in that's actually on Amazon Prime right now. If you look up, uh, the writer is Annie Johnson. Uh, you can find me in Christmas with the In-Laws too, as well as Roots of Good Men. Uh, if you want to check out a, some nice stage productions, uh, if you want to see a good hood uh, flick, I web series on YouTube. At uh, six, the series, or basically BI, the Roman numeral for six, the series. Uh, if you want to see a good wholesome drama, and actually this is a movie that I helped film as well as direct and starred in, you can go to www.vimeo.com backslash on demand backslash pawns. The name of the movie is Pawns. Uh, it's a movie that both me and my daughters are in. Uh, came out very, very, very well, and we're actually pitching it to some. Um, to some uh, Hollywood directors as well. So hopefully that'll get picked up. So like I said, a lot of good things going on. 
Uh, my latest project, I had an opportunity to uh, uh, author a chapter in a book called The Seven Seas of Courtship Woo! with uh, Miss Coffee over here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Me being silly as usual. But I definitely just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity. I meant to say that earlier um, and with all of y'all. It's good to actually hear your voice and see your faces, you know, not just the pictures. Absolutely. And uh, uh, meet y'all through, you know, the web as well. So thanks for the opportunity. Like I said, look me up. Let's have some fun. Awesome. Awesome. So, Neil, talk to us. Tell us about the literary world and how to get unplugged in and get these words right. <laughs> Absolutely. So in most circles, I am known as a literary extraordinaire as I am a national and international award winning author, publisher, and I am the founder of Artists Promoting Success, which is an organization that specializes in helping indie authors and entrepreneurs learn the business side of being creative. Many times people know about writing or creating their product, but they don't know what it means to actually be successful in the business sector of that. And so my organization, Artists Promoting Success, uh, people can connect with me through that website, which is weareaps.com, W-E-A-R-E-A-P-S.com. My passion literally um, is helping authors, entrepreneurs, and women, which is the reason why I'm branded as being the all A-W-E, all inspiring coach. And so if you guys go to that website, which is literally what I just said, aweinspiringcoach.com, then it'll explain everything that I'm doing for authors, entrepreneurs, and women and under my organization. I'm glad to be a woman. So I'm very, you know, I'm multifaceted in what I do. I'll actually be in Texas in January. I'll be on, I'll be conducting my first a regional tour and it's the entrance tour. So it's very interesting. Many people don't think of me as an introvert, but I actually am. And so we'll be um, kind of dealing with being introverted and how you can still overcome that to be successful. And so really quickly, the most, uh, the two upcoming things aside from that tour that people can do is I will be having my fourth annual book award. So every year I host an awards competition for indie authors. And so those submissions begin January 1st. And then my daughter is also an author. And so her second published book, she's written nine, but this will be the second one that will be published um, this year in January. The other ones will drop all in 2020 but she's going to have her uh, release event at Victoria's Studio in Chicago on January 4th. And the name of that book is Hopelessly Persistent. And so it's just a lot of great things going on, but people can find me all across social media, whether it is uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, at APS, the letter N, International. So it's APS International, APS, the letter N, International, and they can connect with me there. Awesome. Pastor J, talk to us. What you got going on in the big NY? <laughs> well, it's so much happening. And again, it's been an honor uh, connecting with all you guys, and I look forward to doing some more great things. Uh, we, I'm in... I'm the senior pastor of the Restoration Tabernacle uh, Church that we founded in 2012. We're going into our seventh year, and we are so excited. Uh, we also have our virtual church, which started about a year ago, and uh, we rocking and rolling with that. Um, I'm also a recording artist, uh, songwriter, producer, I, drummer. I played drums for Bishop Hezekiah Walker for about 10 years. Uh, Grammy Award winning drummers, Grammy Award winning songwriter, um, just so much stuff we have going on. And uh, we're blessed to have our own clothing line, our apparel line, which we started two years ago, All Things Apparel, which uh, of course we get it from Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And uh, I'm so excited. We have our 24 seven online store open. And next month, we're opening our first physical store. So I'm really excited about that, what God is doing. And uh, we also have brand new music that we have two new singles that we just put out. Uh, my first hip hop single, uh, believe it or not. And no, I don't want to be a rapper. I'm just creating music. And it just so happened that uh, with this whole Kanye West 
thing happening, I decided that if he can cross genres and come and do what I do, then I'm going to go and do what he does. And uh, we got our first video out. And um, then we're working on our own book. You know, besides this project, uh, this kind of gave me my um, my mojo back because I've been writing my second book. I have one book out now uh, in the marketplace called You're Not My Daddy, Guidelines to Becoming a Successful Stepfather. Uh, because that's a whole other topic that nobody really talks about. And the way I, this world is, blended families are almost unavoidable. So, you know, I, I uh, give my years of failure in that area as a stepdad and my years of victory. But I'm working on my, my second published book, which is called Destiny is a Decision. And um, I just talk about the who, what, why, and how of going after your destiny. So um, you can find me on Twitter uh, at jhen, uh, on Facebook, Jason Hendrickson, Instagram, Jason Hendrickson. If you just Google my name, I'm on every social media platform, I think. And uh, I'm just excited and looking forward to, con you know, connecting with you guys and doing some great things. Because 2020 is the year of clear vision, no agendas, but success. God bless you. No doubt. No doubt. We're going to go ahead and shut it down. You guys know how to reach me, P. Coffee Brown, on everything. It's P. Coffee Brown on everything, um, except for my LinkedIn. It's Coach P. Coffee Brown. I am a recently certified life coach, and I did essential blockages to help people get to their natural manifestation, help you get to where you say you want to go. So I'm truly excited about that. Like, um, like, Jason Thibodeau mentioned, I am in the same industry. I am a licensed risk management advisor for the state of Texas. If you need to be insured in any capacity, I am the person to get it done for you. So I am an entrepreneur by night and a working woman for the insurance ministries by day. <laughs> but um, And I am in school full time as well. And I am in the middle of two projects, not just one, but two. My first actual romance novel will be dropping here soon as well once I get done with this incredible anthology project. And then we have another anthology project that we're spearheading that's going to head into the end of 2020. So we'll be having something drop in the beginning, the middle, the end. And we've got a couple other things that are in the works and we don't want to prematurely talk about the baby because the baby is still in the oven. So we're going to leave the child to keep on, keep on keeping on in the dark until it's time for the baby to manifest in the light. But until we meet again, I am your hostess with the most is Coach P. Coffee Brown of the hot seat. The second season is upon us in January. Super excited about season two of my online talk show. I would love to see you guys back here in January. The dates will be posted here soon. Ecstatic about where we're heading, heading and you guys will see these faces at some point on my show. I promise you, they're going to be back. <laughs> So excited, right. excited about 2020. You guys have heard it here first. Everything that you need to know about these incredible leaders and how you can reach them here on social media. You guys have a fantastic evening. And until next time, miracles and blessings, peace and prosperity be upon us all. And you guys have a fantastic evening. And remember, all things are possible to them that believe. Have a great night. Y'all be easy. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.